I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. I've noticed a trend lately, and I like it. It's this subtle long shadow effect, like you can see I made here with this Patriots logo. In this Inkscape tutorial, I'll show you how you can do it for yourself. It's very easy. It could be good for logo mock-ups or to have your brand stand out and show it in a different way. Inkscape 1.3 makes it super easy. They named the effect Long Shadow, but just like with anything Inkscape, sometimes it's hard to know where to look. There's so many different options. Where do you find it? How would you know it's under Generate from path long shadow. Also, it's one of the more newer features. I'm using Inkscape 1.3 as of the filming of this. So let's do it. You can drag any logo you want or any type of object you want into the canvas. Why am I doing the Patriots? Because I made this during the game today. I know people don't love the Patriots, but it makes for a good example because I want something that's not a circle or symmetrical. The first tool we're gonna use is actually Paint Bucket. The reason is the long shadow effect only works on a path. And this PNG that I brought in, even though it's transparent, we can't apply the feature. With Paint Bucket, you can change the fill by, change it from visible colors, go all the way down to the bottom alpha. That looks at the transparency of whatever the object is. So in this case, only the graphic itself is opaque. So if I click on the graphic, I create a brand new path and we can change it to black on the ribbon with one click. Now we're ready for long shadow. Here is hierarchy, put it towards the bottom. And remember, it's still selected. Long shadow is found under extensions, generate from path, long shadow. In the pop-up box, you can tell it what you want it to do. There's only two choices, length, I'm going with 200, angle, 145. I did not select the fill shadow with stroke color, but I will click on live preview and this is the long shadow it's gonna make. You can experiment with different angles, but for speed, let's just do apply. Still have the new long shadow selected, I'll drop it to the bottom. Just gives you an idea of how much you're gonna be working with. Bring this aside, I'm gonna duplicate that with Control D and save it in case we have to reference it later. And the only other trick to do is a specialty blur. I'll open up the fill and stroke menu under object fill and stroke. Down here you see the blur slider. If you do a regular blur like this, everything gets blurred evenly around the whole perimeter, which is good for some things, but not the effect we're going for. New to Inkscape 1.3, if we put this back to zero, hit the plus just one time, just so there's any blur at all applied. And if you go to edit paths by node, you'll see these two circles. If you take the top circle, you can drag and only blur vertically. And the same with the side one, you can only blur horizontally. But I want it to go this direction. To do that, all you need to do is turn your object. And you'd think I could do those handles again, but they're actually fixed to the original direction. See, even though I turned it, it's still gonna go with the original orientation. So back to Paint Bucket. I should have mentioned the first time we did Paint Bucket, it's gonna spit out whatever the last color you had for the fill. If you're ever in doubt, you could grab a circle, watch this, if it was red, and I go back to Paint Bucket. Now when I click on this with the alpha setting, this will turn red, which is fine. We can turn it right back to black. This is the path version. This one we don't need anymore. Since this is a brand new path, when I go back to the blur setting, I'll just hit the plus one time. Edit paths by node. Now my horizontal blur will blur it perfect horizontally. I'm keeping all these extra nodes because I want the striations there. I think that looks better. And we'll address the other side in a minute. Time to put it back in place. Drop it down to the bottom. If you hit it twice, you can get your handles and spin it. You can double click it to see where the nodes are if you wanna line it up perfectly. I like to do it visually because I might want to have more or less of this darkness up against the logo. Right there is good. I'm gonna mask out this part, the area we don't want. If you've never done a mask, all we're gonna do is create a shape that will capture the part that we want. I want this bottom part. A one sentence primer for doing a mask, whatever is white will be taken. This random white object we made is selected, hold shift, get the rest of your long shadow. That selected, object, mask, set mask. <laughs> yeah, okay. That looks good already, but I wanna show you one more thing if you wanna have a little bit more subtlety. Before we put it on a white background to see how it really looks, I'll select it on the fill and stroke tab on fill, move over to linear gradient. Don't be shocked if it takes it all away. You can go to edit gradient here with this tool, the gradient tool. The default gradient takes it from black to full transparency, which is fine for this exercise, but I'm gonna move one end of the gradient to wherever I feel like it'll look strongest. 
Now I can move the opposite side until maybe you want it more subtle. I think that's good. Let's put a white background behind it. This is just a plain background with a very subtle gray to white. You just move it around and see what looks best. If you have questions or want to see something done in Inkscape, let me know in the comments below. All right, see you next time.